We're going to begin things. This is the gathering and the welcome. I want to welcome you as the president of the all-new interdenominational ministers action council. Many of our uh, pastors and clergy are on their way. We praise God for their gathering and, and being with us. Uh, we want to welcome you all. We have uh, people from all uh, walks of life and uh, all of our various churches and houses of faith. We are very grateful to have with us here some cadets uh, from the uh, county, uh, Newcastle County EMS recruits. Uh, and I talked with, I think that is Lieutenant Rumback, who said uh, in a conversation with him earlier that uh, many times it's the EMS who goes home with the blood of our sons and children on their shoes and on their clothes. And so it's very appropriate for them uh, to be with us because we're in partnership with them, the police department, with our city and county officials, our mayors here, Councilwoman Shabazz, who plays a major role in the forming of this uh, event. And she's going to speak to us. But we're going to begin with our prayer uh, by the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Livingston, pastor of the Mother uh, Union Church. He's going to come lead us in prayer. And then we're going to walk through uh, an agenda and we're going to tell you uh, what this is all about and give you some instructions on how we move from Spencer Plaza to our neighborhoods where we make a difference. Come on and receive a Reverend Livingston with a hearty amen. Amen. As a sign and symbol of our unity out here today, would you just grab the hand of someone uh, standing nearby? We don't have to create a circle, but just uh, grab someone's hand as we open up in a word of prayer. Uh, let us pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us in the, to thy light, keep us forever in thy path, we pray. And dear God, we lift our hands to you on this day and we sing the, the, the song or pray the prayer, dear God, that we lift our hands to you. No other help we know. If you withdraw yourself from us, we don't know where we would go, dear God. And so right now, even as we face this uh, problem of violence in our community, dear God, we know that your hand is with us, dear God. We know that you are guiding us. You are directing us. You are there with us, dear God. We pray for an end to this violence in this city, dear God. Your word tells us that if your people who are called by your name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, you will hear from heaven. You will forgive our sin and you will heal the land. We're praying, dear God, for a healing of the land right now. And we pray, dear God, that this effort, oh, we know we've had many efforts before, but we pray that this effort, dear God, would be the, the, the continuation, dear God, of moving in the direction of finding peace in our community. We pray for these proceedings today. We pray for all those gathered. We pray, oh God, for those who are on their way. We thank you, dear God, uh, for the IMAC organization, dear God, that, 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 that thought it right that we would come together, dear God, in the presence of fathers and fatherhood and and to be able dear God to make a pledge and to determine that we want to put a stop to the violence in the community we pray that you'd be with us all bless us now in this day in Jesus name we pray amen we praise God for that invocation and the invoking of God's presence and spirit we we want you to know, we want the city and the county to know that IMAC is standing in partnership and in solidarity with our city and county officials, as well as with our police department and our fire department and the EMS and the county and the city. Uh, if this culture of violence is to be redressed, it needs to be the result of a corporate effort and partnership between the houses of faith, city government, county government, state government, and corporate Wilmington, and corporate Newcastle County, and corporate Delaware. And we can then begin to see changes. And so we are happy to have with us our, our mayor, uh, who is here we're going to ask him if we can get all city council persons who are here or county council people if you can come up because after the mayor uh, brings us greetings 
We want you all to determine who's going. Hanifa's going to speak because I'm going to introduce her for a very purposeful reason. And so uh, we will ask the other city council members if they would determine among themselves who will bring the greetings, and then we'll uh, proceed. But let's welcome Mayor Dennis Williams. First of all, I want to thank Pastor Beeman, Reverend Livingston, and IMAC for putting on this. Uh, this is very important that we have the clergy behind us because I think one of the things that is going on in our society today, we have lost our morality and our Christian faith, and our family structure is breaking down. And I truly believe when the church gets back involved, we're going to turn this thing around because basically that's what the African American community was raised on, the church, and the foundation to put us in the right direction. And let me say this. I was born and raised in this city. Every day there's a life lost in this city. That's the day that I died, one day out of my life. I have turned gray, I'm losing my hair. And I'll tell you, I'm very serious about this. This anguishes me. I used to be one of these kids. I came from the Riverside Housing Projects. I go try to talk to these kids constantly, but let me tell you something. If we do not have the churches behind us, if we do not get the family structure back in order, this is gonna to continue to happen. We cannot arrest our way out of this problem. It is not going to work. It's going to bring people back to the table, people back to church, parents back to church, people to understand that this is not the way to go. And I ask all of you, just don't show up here today. When you leave here today, roll your sleeves up, and tomorrow call somebody and ask where you can volunteer. What can you do? See, if my office is not listening to no more negativity. We don't have that issue anymore. We want solutions. If you want to come up and jump up and down and scream in my office, you're welcome to do that, but you better have some solutions when I give you your hour to jump up and scream. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We also have with us City Councilwoman Sherry Dorsey Walker, a man who is always on the cutting edge and walking her neighborhood. And so come on, let's praise God for this sister uh, and elected official in our city. We're going to bring her colleague, who is also the chair of public safety, uh, Councilman Mike Brown. We all know Mike, love Mike as well. So Mike, come on up and bring us greetings as well. Thank you, uh, Pastor. Uh, as I always do before I address the crowd, I always say, let me give honor to God who's the head of my life. For had it not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where Michael would be. I don't know where Michael would be. I want to congratulate all who had a part in putting this together. Uh, I think this is uh, much needed. And as the mayor said, uh, the pointing the fingers are over. It is time now that we all come to the table and find solutions to this problem. Uh, I agree with the mayor as public safety chair. We're not going to be able to arrest ourselves out of this. It's going to take a holistic approach, including and most definitely the churches and you, the community. Uh, I, I believe that when a, it's time now that when crime is, is committed, we must not only say to, our side, to ourselves, enough is enough and no more, but we must be partners with law enforcement and pick up the telephone and call it in and say, this is where they are, this is what they've done, this is where they threw the gun, if that's the case, this is what color they had on clothing. We must take a stand and we must not let fear conquer and overwhelm us and be the dictator to how we run our lives and live in our communities. I agree with this mayor. I agree with this mayor that we have to start now, today, right here. It is no longer about just the police. It is about you and you and you. And so on behalf of the president in his absence, Theo Gregory, who wish he could be here, he's on a flight back into the country. It was a planned vacation and he shared with me this morning to just let you know that whatever he can do along with the mayor, working hand in hand, stride by stride, and working with you to make this community and this city a better and safe place. God bless you, God bless you all, and let's work together to make it to, and all stand tall. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Mike Brown. 
Well, all the members of IMAC who are here, just wave your hand so we can say thank you to all the men and women of IMAC uh, who are here. We praise God uh, for you and our affiliate members uh, who are here. Friends of IMAC, wave your hand as well. We're happy that you're with us. We see our brothers and partners from the nation who are with us. We love you, man. Thank you for standing in solidarity with us. Our peacekeepers and brothers, uh, we, we, are, we are working together because we have got to come up with a solution that's going to end this violence. And we believe today that the fatherhood rally is a major step in the direction that is an action plan that will help end this violence. And so uh, about, uh, I don't know how many months ago, uh, Hanifa Shabazz, who is the council person for the district where my church is located, and she is always on the phone with me. We're talking or we're texting. We're going out and having lunch and sharing. And one thing I can say about her and about Sherry Dorsey and but all of city council for that matter, uh, we, they are concerned and every time uh, some senseless violence happen in their district, they feel it personally. Uh, and, and so as a result of feeling it personally, nearly in tears on more than one occasion, Hanifa said, we've got to do something about this violence. And then she told me about an organization that she's part of, the National Black Caucus of Local Elected Officials, and that they were doing this fatherhood rally on the father, uh, the Saturday before Father's Day, wanting to know if we could replicate it here in Wilmington because of some situations we weren't able to do it on that Saturday. We rescheduled it for this Saturday. We know everybody is busy, family reunions, weddings, so on and so forth. So we don't want to take a whole lot of your time, but we would not be here today had it not been uh, for Councilwoman Shabazz being disturbed by God to say to a man of God, we've got to do something. We, uh, politicians, uh, elected city officials, and the faith community to speak directly to this culture of violence. And so I'm going to ask her to come up and give us the occasion and why it's important that we sign on to this fatherhood pledge against violence. Come on, let's welcome and let's say hello to Councilwoman Shabazz. Thank you, Reverend Beeman. Um, this is my second occasion of doing such this in May of 2011 after another senseless killing that all of them touched me personally but I'm, no one is negated from the violence in the city and I did a call out for 500 men to call the action in May of 2011. At that time um, many individuals from faith came through. We had almost three to four hundred men that came together. We had several meetings but it just faded away and kind of took me under toll myself because I got sick and I couldn't keep it going because I think I'm doing too much. But when the National Black Caucus Local Official, which I've been a long-lasting member, the current president, Adam McFadden, duplicated a similar event that was taking place in New York and gave, came to us as the leadership and said, we need to replicate this across the nation. And on the 14th, there were over 50 cities who were doing exactly what we're doing right here. And I know many of you know that we are connected one way or the other through spirit, through ideas, through passion, through hurt and pain. This violence is nationwide. So I thought that we definitely would be, want to be in that number, to want to be in that energy of our men standing up and, and take, saying no more. I've had a lot of sisters ask me, well, why aren't you going to call one for women? When are women going to have a women rally? Well, I think that a lot of the issues is with the family and the man is the head of the family. And if we can get our men back in their leadership rightful positions, we women are already here and got your back. We've been holding it for quite some time. But one thing we cannot do, even in all that we do do, and have done it greatly, we have raised many great men to go forth to be great leaders, but we cannot teach a man, child, to be a man. We need you, brothers. Just like we need your seed to bring forth that life, we need you to come forth and continue to give that male child what he needs to stand up to be the man. I call upon you, brothers, because as a woman, when I need support and I need safety and I need provisions, I can't call another sister because I can do what a sister can do, but I do call upon you, brothers, 
the men to come forth and provide me what I can't provide for myself. I can't stop these male children. I can't teach them how to be a man. So when this came about, I took on the call of action in May of 2011, and I'm called upon Reverend Beeman again, I said, because he is a president of IMAC, to come forth again, and we have got to, God is, he is upset with us that we are not on our post, and know that we women will be behind you 100%. So I'm so excited that this came about, that we can say that Wilmington, Delaware is in the numbers of the other 50 cities who has taken this pledge. I was asked, why do we need to do a pledge in writing? Well, when you say something out of your mouth and you put it in writing and you sign your name to it, it makes a commitment that you cannot negate. You can walk away from it, but your spirit is constantly calling upon you. I said I was going to do that. And all that we have is our word. Our word is bond. So, brothers, I am so proud to look at this audience and see so many of you here today because where there's one, there's, many, there's thousands. And we all come together in the spirit of God to get back on our posts and our rightful positions as the black man. Father of all civilization, we can stop this tomorrow. So tomorrow, we're going to step off, off from the second. We're going to go forward. We're going to grab not just the children that we bred from our seed, but the children that are in our neighborhood. So I'm, again, I'm thank you, Reverend Ray Beeman, for hearing my constant cry <laughs> and answering me and supporting the things that I'm doing. And um, I will do whatever as the female standing behind you gentlemen to save our male children in my capacity as elected official, as my capacity as a grandmother, and yes, as a capacity as your sister to save our children. Thank you. Last Saturday, my church, Bethlehem Church, periodically we become the church beyond the stained glass windows and we go into the neighborhood, the east side community, and we provide worship, um, testimonies, praying door to door, we set up a barbecue grill. And last week we were on Bennett Street from 7th all the way down to Jesse and James. Uh, and it was a wonderful event. We, there's one grandmother said to me, she's while sitting on her stoop, she said, Red, I'm so happy you're here because this is the first time that I have sat out on my stoop this entire good weather. She said summer, but summer just began. But you know, for many of us, summer starts in May. And so she said, because if you're here, it means I can sit on my stoop because the street will be safe. And that resonated with me. But one thing I need to tell you is, while we were setting up to represent hope, Brother Larry, in that community, on Bennett Street, on the east side, about a block and a half away on Taylor Street, I believe, a young man was gunned down by three teenagers. My member setting up the barbecue could hear the shots ring out. We're that close. And what angers me is that while we were there trying to represent God, this demonic spirit of violence threw down the gauntlet and said, not in my neighborhood. Now, if you are a person of faith and that does not insult you or enrage you, you need to check the God you worship. And we are here to tell the enemy and this demonic culture, enough is enough. And so we're going to talk about this pledge. But before we do that, I want to give a personal testimony. But before I do that, I want to ask if there's anyone here who has lost a loved one. Your brother, your sister, your nephew, your son, your mother, I mean a close relative. I'm not talking about your boy. I'm talking about a person that is a relative of yours and, they, and you've lost a loved one and you know this pain. I want you to come this direction and stand to my left because I'm going to give you an opportunity to speak. Thank you, Reverend Beamer. I did forget to say one thing. Um, one of the other things that I've been able to do with the support of Mayor Williams and Secretary of 
help um, Rita Langriff, if I, I called upon the Center for Disease Control to come into our city to assess our social, eth 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 economical, education, all of our systems that support us. Because as you know and I know, the condition that our young people are in are not our nature. That there has to be some mental incapacitation that is causing our young people to think it's okay to take a gun and take someone's life. That's just not who we are. Um, they did it down in Lower Sussex County and for suicides, and so I said, well, let's see if they do it up here in Wilmington for homicides. And I sent them the data about our condition of our drop -out high school dropouts, our, high, um, our, our, our criminal, criminal background, our social service background. I sent them the data that, of what is uh, really who and what we represent on, in their perspective. And they said, we do have issues here in Wilmington. So I'm very proud to say that right now, and again, I want to thank Mayor Williams for supporting me um, and providing the resources for them to come here. They are assessing our current conditions. Because Wilmington does not provide its own education. We don't, we don't govern our own education system. All that comes from the state. So we're, they are assessing the state's application of its education, its correctional, its social services, public health issues to see where there are problems or weak links that they're not properly addressing. We know that the Civil Rights Association is here because of Christiana School District's inequitable uh, treatment of, of um, expulsions. And now they say we don't treat special ed children very well. And most of our children are classified as special ed. So we do have issues, but I wanted to do it not just from that level, because once they come and say what the services are, we must be prepared and equipped and ready to put into action what we know is very holistic, very culturally competent ish, um, services that are going to address the post-traumatic stress syndrome, the post-traumatic syndrome of slavery, the inequitable education, the non-support of social services, all those things that we know that are missing, the dysfunctional household, we have to be there ready to be able to put those things in action with the cultural competency that we know. Because I always say that it can't take a panther to raise a lion. We need lions to raise lions. Thank you, Beeman, for that time. I want to share with you that in my family, 2012, 2013, 2012, 2011, that I lost three nephews to violence. I know this pain. In 2011, a nephew of mine was gunned down in the driveway of his house. He was hit more than eight times by bullets. The person who was the shooter was arrested while in the line at university signing up for his senior class. He has now been convicted and is in prison. Did you hear me? He was in college, he was in line, registering for his senior year. 2012, I had another nephew, Twani, who was beaten and stabbed to death in his house, so disfigured that they could not have an open casket viewer. And on last Christmas Eve, 2012, my namesake nephew, Sylvester Scott, was gunned down in Albany, New York. They counted 15 shells. I don't know how many times he was hit, but 15 shells. All shot, killed, stabbed, and murdered by young African-American males. I know this pain. I don't want to bury any more children. Pastors, where are you? Imams, where are you? We don't want to bury any more of our sons because of this senseless violence. And so, men, we need you to step up. We got one a brother who's going to talk now about a loss in his family. Then we're going to go right to the pledge and these action steps. Bro? Uh, that's Brother Mitchell. And um, I just want to share with you because I, was, I said I didn't want to, when he made that pledge, I wasn't going to do anything. But my knees start to buckle. And that's the Holy Spirit is touching me. Because if I didn't move, that means that my cousin's son died in vain. So I'm here to stand that he was on the west side of Wilmington. And he was on the corner. His name was, I don't know if, we have a large family, Mitchell family. 
but he's a young boy, and he, they drove by on Madison Street. I don't know if you remember that. And, uh, and think about it, they didn't know who had shot him. And that night, I came from New York, and I came to my cousin's house and give my condolence and everything and support and prayer with the family. And these three young men got out of the car, hugging her and everything. And the Holy Spirit told me, one of these kids knows something about this. And I went home and prayed to God about that. Well, let me tell you, prayer is the key. Now, we can't be everywhere. But if you're your neighbor, I believe prayer, when you connect with God, I, I just know that he will show up by faith. I just know that you just have that faith and power. And one thing Pastor Livingston says, that Second Chronicles, if my people is called by my name, I will come down and heal the land. And I believe that. I believe that. I really believe that. I just want to share that. And one of those kids was one of the boys who shot my cousin. Prayer answers everything. It brings things to the light. And what I'm just trying to say, brothers, we've got to also put the whole armor of God on us. The whole arm, because it's only his power can break that fear of the enemy. And share that with you. You see, standing to my right and my left, the actual 12 action steps about fathers, fatherhood pledge against violence. And this is not just for those of us who have been blessed to bring sons and daughters into the world. This is for all males who are present today and even our teenagers who are here. We want you to begin to sign this pledge. And why sign it? Uh, Councilman Shabazz explained it. To speak it is one thing, but to actually put your name on it uh, is a kind of a greater commitment. And when you sign, you're gonna get your pledge form, but you're also going to get a card that fits nicely in your wallet to remind you every time you reach for a dollar to pay for that Starbucks, well, Starbucks more than a dollar, whatever you reach and pay for with, with your money, you will be reaching in your wallet and you'll be reminded that you have signed this pledge. I'm not going to take the time to read through the pledge. You can read it, but we have our tables down uh, at the, um, uh, the, on the sidewalk. This, uh, IMAC agreed last week at our monthly meeting that this is going to be a summer long initiative. We're going to connect with SeaTac. We haven't had a chance to connect with Ty Johnson, but we're going to connect with Ty and SeaTac. We're going to take the street corners and pass out this pledge to brothers who are on the street corner. We're looking for OGs, original gangsters, who will join us in this. I'm looking at some original gangsters out here right now. There are a bunch of OGs in front of me. We need you to sign on because you got street credibility. And you can help us go into neighborhoods that some of us that don't have the street visas can go into. So we need you to sign this pledge. We're going to be going to barbershops all summer long. We have the IMAC Revival coming up next week. We're going to be signing men up at the Revival. I talked with Pastor Livingston. We're going to be signing up people at all the August quarterly events. And we're going to continue until we can be like the Pied Piper, going throughout the neighborhoods, throughout the city, getting men. If we have to do it one by one, to sign this pledge, to say that we are sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. And we want to see a difference. And the action steps are in these 12 uh, statements that are on the pledge. We praise God for that. I saw uh, the Vice President of IMAC, uh, Reverend uh, Vincent Oliver. We're going to ask if you would come and close us out in prayer. Brother uh, Ron Hall is going to put some music on. Brothers, you can go down and sign uh, the pledge forms that down, down the steps on the sidewalk. Uh, Reverend Vince, will you come and close us out in prayer? Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being part of what we're trying to accomplish. And we ain't no ways tired. Amen. We're going to, if we had to do a one brother by a one brother, we're going to get the men to sign up and be part of this pledge. Thank you. Bless you. Just before I pray, I don't think enough has been said about the need for black men to support this mayor. He is not in this battle by himself. He is not responsible nor should he shoulder the blame. We have a media locally that, is, that has blood on its hands 
for the way things are reported. We've got a mindset that is literally intellectual assault on the black male, the black female. So we're in this together. And we're just a little bit too docile this afternoon. We're just a little too calm for what's going on. I'm incensed, I'm angry about the assault, first on our boys and our young men, but they're also assaulting our young women through the media, through the TV, some of the programming. We've got to object to it. Yeah. We've got to stand up and yeah. say that is not yeah. what we want our daughters and granddaughters to model themselves to be. We've got to stand up and challenge all of that. We can't just fight the bullets and the guns. We've got to fight the mentality. So in that spirit, I close us in prayer. Father, in your powerful name, a name that we believe to be a prayer answering name, in the name that will solve every issue and every dilemma that we have, we come yielded unto you, not passively, but we come submitting to you, but we also come with what you put into us, manhood, men, and the mentality of conquerors and warriors. So we come to the battlefield ready for battle, yeah. armed with prayer yeah. and the word of God. We come from different faiths and from different communities, but we come as fathers and men. We come as sons, we come as victims. Would you hear our cry? Would you bless this gathering and the future gatherings on this behalf? Bless every imam, every pastor, every leader, every father. Keep us by your power. Bless this mayor and those council persons who lead him. And we'll give your name the credit when we come out of this thing victoriously. In your powerful name we pray. Let us say amen. All right, brothers. Down those steps. At the tables, you can begin to sign the pledge. And when you leave, we will also give you a card that you can put into your wallet. Come on, let's go down the steps here and let's sign up. There are four stations, so you can queue up. Again, thank you to uh, our county MS uh, cadets who are helping us and to the city of Wilmington uh, who gave us this as uh, support to us, did not charge us. We thank you and to our EMS for the city. Thank you. Come on, let's get fired up.